got the name Knowledge because I was always a know-it-all in every sense of the word, whether it be in class, outside of class, gossip. I knew everything. I always had an opinion on something. You know, it just kind of came about that I took that name. I started off like with the name Knowledge Born. So a lot of times people, you know, when they hear me on records and I'm like, Knowledge Born, Knowledge Born, Knowledge Born, they think that's actually the name, but I just shortened it to Knowledge. But uh, I took the name Knowledge Born when I was kind of on my like, I'm a fake one to be five percenter. You know, I was in uh, I was in high school, and I was at Catholic high school, so I was like rebelling against the system. Like I'm gonna be Muslim, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna take the name Knowledge Born. That's what y'all gonna call me. That was my tag name. That was my MC name. I ha I've had that name since eighth grade. If you get, I have like my high school picture, like my graduating portrait. I didn't put my real name on the, in the corner. I put knowledge in the corner. My mom hates me to this day for that. <laughs> yeah, my mom's still mad at that because she was sending out my um, senior portraits to her friends. And they're like, why do it say knowledge in the corner? I'm like, oh, that's that small rap name. I don't know this name. So lo and behold, I guess I'm somewhat a rapper now. So they, they all is forgiven, you know what I'm saying? All is forgiven. But I think it's just funny that I had the foresight to use that name even back then, you know what I mean? I kind of gave it to myself. I met Double O um, at a recruiting trip. I used to play baseball back in the day. I used to be an athlete a long time ago. I went to University of Pennsylvania as a high school senior. I think I was 17, 16, 17, about to turn 17, something like that. We met and uh, really just kicked it off because we were like-minded individuals really into hip hop. There was a talent show that weekend um, that all the recruits went to. Kind of on a spur of the moment thing, I jumped on stage and freestyle. And from there we met, he was DJing the talent show. We emailed back and forth over that summer. And he was like, if you end up coming to school, I got a studio in my apartment. And you know, I felt like he was on the same stuff my homeboys from here were on. And I'm like, yo, I could go to this school. You know, maybe it's not all as bad, maybe it's not all that bad, you know what I mean? I love the city of Philly. It was around the time the Roots was popping off. I actually used to intern at OK Player. I was probably one of the original interns at that website. So I knew Sean G and um, Quest and, and Angela Nistel um, and Dan, who's still over there. Um, so I, they know me from way, they know me as the intern. So <laughs> it's just funny, like I, I definitely put in work in Philly and Philly has such a musical culture with the gambling huff. You know what I mean? So to be able to go to Ivy League Institution and absorb the culture of Philly, which Al and Iverson had just got to, and then Donovan McNabb, and it was just like a city that was on the rise and was popping and had a, it had a nice mix of cultures. And it reminded me of Hyde Park, the, the way that the campus was situated in the middle of the city and in and, and like an integrated neighborhood. It, it just reminded me of it. Double O was a big part of like showing me around and letting me see what the experience was going to be, you know, because I ended up quitting baseball at that like sophomore year. So definitely Double O played a big role in me going to going to school in Philly. Oh, we had a large crew when we were in college. We used to throw parties. How the kids in the hall started was was really a bigger conglomerate. We had this group called 50Z which was like an entertainment, promotions, marketing, whatever company. We probably had like three dudes that rap, two dudes that made beats, two dudes that were DJing, and everybody else was like trying to play, you know, executive roles. Like, excuse me, some dudes were like doing marketing and handing out flyers. Other dudes were, you know, helping out with developing the website and doing the viral stuff. Even back then, we were kind of forward thinking and knowing that the internet was going to be the wave of the future as far as communication, especially at our school. Everybody, you know, read their email obsessively on our campus. So we created a listserv that used to send out blasts for events. We had a social networking site even back then. So we kind of had that popping. And then senior year comes along for most people. And those guys, those guys were older than me. So when those guys graduated, most of them went and got like corporate nine to fives. So long story short, you know what I mean? It got dwindled down to just me and Double O. And so I just said, yo, like, it's one for all, all for one. Like, <laughs> we got to create a group on our own. We can't rely on these other dudes anymore. We just need to make our own situation. 
And then at first it was like, well, I'm gonna be a solo artist and he was just gonna be a producer that worked with me heavily or whatever. But now I was like, yo, just scrap all that. We need to just take it old school, make a group. We can only rely on each other. You can't rely on these people to buy your beats. I can't rely on these people to, you know what I'm saying, put me on as a solo artist. We need to just make our own situation and do it independent. So when I moved to LA after graduating, that's really what happened. We just hit the ground running. Less than a year, we had a record deal sitting on the table, so.